Hey everyone, it's Kara. Um, obviously you see something is different. <laughs> um, and if you were, um, if you liked my fan page or my Twitter page, then you will have already known that um, Thursday, April 14th, um, I actually had my daughter Alexis. She decided she wanted to come early. And I guess this will be my labor and delivery video for you guys. Um, I'll try to make it quick, but I'm not sure how quick it's going to be. Um, in total, I was only in labor for four hours. No, for two and a half or three hours. Whatever. But um, I did end up having to have a C-section. Which, the C-section itself wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Um, just the recovery sucks. And so right now she's five days old, so I'm five days postpartum. And um, it still sucks. Like, it still hurts pretty bad. And everything's really swollen. But I'll get to that. Okay. So, I guess... I'll start off. Wednesday, like, all day on Wednesday, I hadn't had anything wrong, like, nothing felt weird or different. Like, I didn't, I get, technically I didn't feel her moving as much as I have before, but I didn't have any, like, of those telltale signs. I didn't think I lost my mucus plug, um, and, like, of course I had, like, the usual discharge and stuff, but I think what I didn't realize was it had gotten thicker, and I probably did end up losing my mucus plug at some point on Wednesday, but, um, so I get through all day Wednesday, and it's like midnight, so it's now Thursday, and me and my husband were laying in bed, and we're just talking, and at around 12.40, I feel this um, rubber band type snap feeling inside, and then this huge gush of water, like movie type gush. Um, yeah, and I didn't know what to think. I was just like, oh my god, my water just broke. Um, but that's not what I said. I said, crap, I think my water broke. <laughs> Which... Daniel thought I was joking. He's like, really? He's like, are you being serious? I was like, I would not joke about that. So I get out of bed. Or actually, he flies out of bed first. He like jumps over me. And um, like he's freaking out. And he's like, well, I think this is it then. <laughs> so I like get out of bed. And I'm like, yeah. And everything is soaked. Like the bed is soaked. I am, like, dripping over to the bathroom, and, oh, it was bad, like, everything was wet, and, um, yeah, so, we left for the hospital, and what was really funny is, Thursday, I actually had an appointment with a high-risk doctor, so, I actually got to miss that, um, but, yeah, so, my water broke, and I ended up, uh, we got that at the hospital at 1, so, if you're keeping a track of what time it is. Um, so we get there and our hospital has like three different levels. It has um, OB screening room, it has labor and delivery, and then it has mom and baby unit. So I'm down in the OB screening room. I'm probably down there for like a half an hour because they don't think I'm in labor. They probably thought I was one of those women that rushes to the screening room like every time anything happens and they're like you might have just like you know peed on yourself or whatever I'm like not with as much fluid as I had come out there's no way that that was just like pee no there's no way so they check me in and they hook me up to all the monitors and stuff of course fetal monitoring and all that all that jazz and um yeah, midwife comes in and she's like checking me and she's like, I'm going to make sure that what you had was actually in and out of fluid. So she's like, 
And there's four different tests that I have to run. So she runs one. It's like this litmus type paper. And she like dips it in the fluid, like at the edge. And she's like, well, this one's positive. She's like, one out of four. And she's like, now I have to do this one. And she used um, the, what is it called? The speculum. She's like, I'm just going to swab your cervix and see how that is. And she like, she's like, you're already at like a three. And I had no idea. So according to my midwife on Tuesday, I wasn't dilated at all. So I'm already at a three. And um, so she goes. And um, she's, she, um, she took like slide samples. She's going to go look at them under the microscope. So she leaves, and at this point, I start having really bad contractions. I started having some in the car, but they weren't that bad. They were still, like, a minute apart, though. Like, my contractions, they started immediately after my water broke. They were immediately a minute apart. And, yeah, they just ended up getting more intense. And I had back labor, which really really sucks um yeah it just intensifies the pain even more so after that they, she finally comes back and she's like well all the tests have included that yes your water did break we are going to admit you you are going to have the baby tonight or within the next 24 hours anyway and she's like but there's three other women in labor as well and theirs are more active. She's like, you seem to not be in that much pain, and you don't seem to be, like, progressed as far as they are. She's like, so yours isn't that impending. So, we're there for another, like, 20 minutes waiting, and, like, it's getting more and more painful. Like, it hurts. It hurts bad. And then she comes back, and she's like, alright. And she tells Daniel to go get his pass and stuff to go up to the labor and delivery room. So he does that. And they take me. They take me up. And um once I get there, they're just like there's just like four nurses. There's people waiting to hook me up to an IV. There's a woman gonna ask me questions. And finally an OB comes in and she's like, Alright, we're gonna do an ultrasound and then we're gonna check you and see how far you are. So, she does the ultrasound, and the look on her face is, like, hilarious when she sees that she's breech. She's like, did you know your baby's breech? Yes. Um, and she's like, her feet are, like, really far down here. And then she checks me, and she's like, oh my god, the feet are coming out. Which, at that point, I'm just like, this just feels, like, surreal. Like, kind of an alien movie. Oh my god, his feet are coming out. So, she's like, we're going to have to do a C-section, and she, I think she was shocked that me and Daniel, we weren't freaked out when they said we were, I was going to need a C-section. I was just like, okay. And, yeah, they, like, immediately started getting everything ready. They handed him his scrubs that he would need to put on, and all that jazz that goes along with it. They gave me, like, this really weird shot. It was like... It tasted like rubbing alcohol. <laughs> like the way rubbing alcohol smells, that's what it tasted. So that sucked. Um, I guess it was to keep me from like regurgitating or something. I don't know. The worst part, I think though, was actually getting the spinal. Because once I'm in the, once I'm in the OR and stuff, like, I'm fine. Like, it hurts, obviously, because I'm having contractions. But, Seriously, that spinal. Oh my god. I thought I was gonna break the woman's arm that was like holding me. Cause, ugh. She's like, okay, you're gonna feel like three slight pokes or whatever, and then like this burning sensation. No. She was doing it as I was having contractions. Like, she couldn't time them in between. No, she had to do it while I was having a contraction. And doing it with back labor sucks even worse, I'm sure. But, so yeah, she did that. The pressure, oh my god. It wasn't just pressure for me, what with having back labor. Um, 
the pressure from the epidural or the, the epidural like needle type thing um, that sucked. It felt like she was like shoving something the size of my finger like through my back. It hurt so bad. Um, and then let's see. So that started, and then they're like, okay, now lay back. Like, then we're going to leave the catheter, and it had to, like, happen, like, so fast. So I ended up getting a spinal, which means they don't leave it in your back. They just inject the medicine and then take it back out. Um, almost immediately after she was done, did everything start to feel all tingly? And by that, I mean it starts at, like, your toes. Your toes get all tingly, and then it, like, works its way up. And you're just very, very tingly and warm feeling. Um, and they put the little um, massage things on my legs just to keep the circulation. Um, which I really liked those. Those are nice. <laughs> anyway, um, after that, they uh, brought Daniel in. And they, like, he sat down and they started. Uh, the only thing I felt, like, I didn't feel them cutting. Like, I didn't even feel hardly any pressure. Uh, the only thing I felt was, like, this weird, like, sensation go across my stomach. Because I'm numb from, like, the boobs down. And even my fingers are, like, tingly and stuff. But I am shaking. Like, I don't know why. I think my body was, like, in shock from it happening so fast. So, uh, so I was shaking. And... That was pretty funny. And finally, like, ten minutes later, they come up and they're like, they ask Daniel, they're like, do you want to see? So he stands up and he's watching. And it's so cute. The like, looks on his face were adorable. Um, yeah. So she was born at um, 3.28 in the morning. So I was only a labor for like, not that long, <laughs> I don't feel like doing math. And um, she's really tiny, she was born at 36 weeks and 3 days, and she only weighed 4 pounds and 7.5 and ounces, and was only 17 and a half inches long. So she is really super tiny. Um, even preemie stuff is kind of big for her, like the preemie diapers that she has to wear. They're still too big for her. Like, it's ridiculous. But, um, she was healthy. She didn't have to go to the NICU. She didn't have to be seen by any special doctors. Nothing. She got to go immediately with us up to the mom and baby unit after, you know, my, like, hour in recovery. And, um, yeah, so she's pretty healthy. They were, they've been worried about jaundice with her because she has, um, she has a yellow tinge to her. But she's been eating really well, and they're like, the more she eats, the the better it'll get. And um, we didn't get to go, come home until yesterday, so on Monday we got to come home. But if you're counting, that's four days in the hospital. <laughs> uh, or no, that's five days in the hospital, actually. But, you know, it was for her health. She had on the billy blanket for quite a while. They started it on... Sunday in like the afternoon after they did her Billy Ribbon test and um yeah she didn't get off it until shortly before we left the hospital yesterday um yeah by the time we left she had only lost 6.67 percent of her body weight from the time of birth so that's not that bad actually and um yeah, so she's pretty healthy, and she's a pretty good baby, she doesn't cry a lot, she cries when she's immensely hungry, but I try not to wait that long, I try to, when she has the cues, I'll start trying to feed her, um, because she's so tiny, and because, uh, I'll say this, the day after I had her, my milk came in, like, not even joking, my milk came in one day after. Um, which is unheard of, as as is a preemie baby, not being in the NICU, not needing anything. Um, yeah. And
and I am producing a lot of milk. Um, let's see. I'll tell you this, every feeding, or not every feeding, every time I have to pump after I finish um, feeding her, or f finish feeding her after I pump, or whatever, every pumping session, I get out at least four ounces per side, and that's quite a bit. And, um, yeah. So, um, if you have any questions, go ahead and post them down below, because I really want to do a question and answer video for you guys about anything that you have about her, or my labor, or delivery, or whatever, any advice or anything like that. Um, yeah. So, I guess I'll go ahead and show you. Her, her head is, her hat's coming off. I'll tell you this though, before I show you to her, because she kind of looks a little scary, um, the bones in her head, um, they, they separate and they like, go over each other in order to go through the birth canal. Well, hers have already like, separated and stuff, so she has like, ridges and soft spots on her head from where they're like, um, fused together, but they should separate, the doctor said, so. That is what's going on with her head, because I know people are going to ask. And, let's see if I can get up. She also can't, like, regulate her body temperature very well, so she has to be wrapped up, like, immensely. So, here is what she looks like. She's very tiny, so she's all hidden in here. But this is my little daughter, Alexis. Let's so bring it closer. She is very cute. She doesn't cry a lot, which is good. Um, even if she did, I wouldn't be too worried about it. But um, the whole time over there, they had to do a little blood sugar test. So she has like bruises on her hands, and she has them all over her feet. And yeah. So this is her. She doesn't have that much meat on her bones. But she's healthy, and she's good. She has little blonde eyebrows. Well, and that's her head. So you can see that. And her hair is progressively getting lighter, and she's getting more of it each day. So hopefully she'll have lots of hair. Um, yeah, so if you guys have any questions, go ahead and put them down below. Like I said, I'll do a, a question and answer video for the whole labor and delivery and, like, pregnancy, anything like that. Um, and definitely tell me, because I don't know if I want to do this yet, but, um, if you guys want to see, like, weekly updates with her or me and the postpartum and stuff, go ahead and, like, tell me down below, because I don't know if I want to do them yet. So, yeah. Uh, I hope you guys have a good day and you guys stuck around to watch this entire video. Um, yeah, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.